Hi, and welcome to another episode of your guide on Ghana. My name is Ivy Prosper, and today I am going to talk to you about transportation in Ghana. Now, if you're moving to Ghana and you don't have a car and you're relying on public transportation or shared transportation, I wanted to give you some information. So what are the types of transportation when you come to Ghana? Well, when you're moving here from another place that you might be used to a more structured system, you might find some challenges, but there might be some positives for you here as well. So first of all, the most common form of transportation that people have in Ghana is known as the trotra. And the trotra is the, those vans that you see and they've packed people in their 16 seater vans. Uh, you know, anywhere else in the world, these might be only eight people seated in this van, but they've packed it in row by row by row and 16 people are seated in this vehicle. And they drive around town, they pick up people at designated bus stops, but there's also non-designated bus stops where people will be standing on the road, wave um, at the vehicle and the vehicle will stop. When you're on the vehicle, when you're in the trotro, the same thing, there are designated bus stops, but there are also non-designated stops. So people will be in the car and just tell the driver or the mate, who is the person who collects the fare, I want to get off here and then they'll just stop and then you get off. And so it's very random. It can cause problems when it comes to traffic and driving, because if you're a person who's driving behind one of them and then they just suddenly decide to stop somewhere because a passenger wants to get off, it can cause a bit of a problem. Sometimes it can even cause accidents. Um, but that's one of the most, that is the most common form of transportation for people in Ghana, the trotro. Um, the next one is, um, the loading taxi, which is basically a carpool. So you have what they call a taxi rank, which are these stations where taxis will be sitting and they may be going to certain destinations and then you load in the car, carpool. So let's say you are, um, at 37 station, which is close to the 37 hospital. And that is in Accra. At that station, there'll be taxis that are going to Osu, going to Laboni, going to different parts of town. And they have a fare on it because the fare is divided between the number of people in the car. So it's a, a car with a driver, then you have four people. So three in the back, one in the front. That is what they call a loading car. Then what they call taxi dropping, which is you get your own taxi and they take you from point A to point B. You negotiate your fare and then you go to where you're going. So basically when it comes to taking the taxis in Ghana, they don't have meters on them. So there's not a metered system where you get in and then as you're going each kilometer, it goes up. Basically you are determining how much you are willing to pay the driver based on where the driver is taking you. Now, generally, there are known prices for certain destinations, certain distances. But if you're new to the area, new to the country, you won't have any idea what this is. And sometimes some drivers will take advantage of that and overcharge you for what you're supposed to be paying. Um, so it's important if you want a tip, ask somebody who's familiar with the area. Hey, how much would it cost if I'm going from here to here? And then they can give you a general idea. And then that would be your leverage that you would use when you are negotiating your taxi fare to go to where you're going. Um, and then the other one is the bus system. So there are buses, they don't go everywhere and they don't run all the time. So there's the Metro mass transportation system. These Metro Mass buses are like the big city buses that you see around the world and other, other cities around the world, like Toronto, New York, you know, um, London. You have buses, you pay a fare, you get on. And there are buses, actually, the Metro Mass has a card. You load money on the card, and as you get on the bus, you tap it, and then it takes your fare off. So that's the Metro Mass system. But they only leave from certain destinations, certain stations. They, they go from one point to the other they don't necessarily pick up people on the way. So it's not like in other places around the world where there's a bus stop, you stand there and wait and the bus comes and stops to pick you up. This system rather is you go to the station where they're starting their journey and then you get off at the end or you get off along the way. They have certain stops where they let people off, but they don't have designated places that they say that you pick people up on the way. The, the Metro Mass bus doesn't do that, unfortunately. They only do it during rush hour. Um, 
but it, it's it's weird because the people have to like basically wave at them with their prepaid card so the driver sees you have a card to get on the bus so it's not really very well structured when it comes to just getting on the bus at certain bus stops um, throughout the city and then it doesn't run all day they only run during the morning rush hour and then in the evening rush hour when people are leaving work and by the latest five o'clock there's no more buses that are taking people places when it's the Metro Mass system. The latest you might see one is six and it's because it's already picked people up and it's taking them to the final destination. Then there's the, these buses, they're green buses. They call them the Ay Ayololo bus. Ayololo, I hope I said that right. Um, these buses also take people, um, they pick people up, you pay a fare. That one is not a card system, but there's somebody, there's a, like a conductor on the bus who goes around and collects the money, then he gives you a ticket um, you keep your ticket in case somebody asks you um, if you've paid. So those also run during rush hours, um, taking people to common places throughout the city um, of Accra and in uh, Tema and, and some other places too. Um, but it's a good idea to try to find out information about where the stations are for you to be able to pick up this bus to go to work or wherever it is that you may be going, if it's you know an event or whatever it may be you're doing for the day. But they only run during rush hour times. It's not throughout the entire day. Then there's the, um, there's the intercity bus system. If you're traveling from city, city, city to city, there's the VIP buses, the VVIP buses, the um, intercity bus, I think it's called, um, that you can take from city, from place to place. So with those, when you go online, you can find information about where their stations are, um, call them to find out their schedules. And one of the challenges though in Ghana when it comes to taking the bus is it's not like in other places. Like in Canada, if I'm getting on the bus, the bus is just going and going and going and picking up passengers and they are not waiting for the bus to be full before they leave. So like in Ghana, one of the things is the bus will wait until the bus is full before it leaves the station to go where it's going. And I'm just like, if you're not full, just go. But the way they do it here is they wait until they're full. The Trotros do the same thing. If they're at a station, like say they're leaving from Tema to Accra, um, they will wait until the vehicle is full before they leave to go on to their destination. They don't leave when it's halfway or just a few people. They will just wait until the vehicle is full before they go anywhere. Now, going from city to city, you can take those buses I mentioned. The, the, they're, they're like Greyhound buses, um, if that helps with the reference point. So like the, S, the STC um, inner city bus, the, um, they go from city to VIP and VVIP. They go from city to city and you pay your ticket price. Um, there's also trotros um, that operate as buses to take people from city to city. And a lot of people will take that as an option because it's cheaper than taking the formalized bus system. So that's another way that you can go from place to place is that there are those trotros, which are the vans that will also take you from place to place, from city to city. Um, so that's another option as well. Um, and then there's rideshare service, which are Uber or Bolt. Bolt used to be called Taxify. And these are the two ride sharing services that are available in Ghana. Now with, um, with, with those, they're not available across the country, they're just in certain regions. So I know that in, uh, in a greater Accra, and I believe Kumasi, and um, I think Cape Coast also has the ride share service. You can book an Uber or book a Bolt with your app on your phone. If you already have the apps on your phone when you come to Ghana, you just start using them. There is an option to do cash payments in Ghana, um, a lot of African countries offer cash payments as an option, whereas in like the US and Canada, you don't have the cash option, you just pay by card. The whole thing about it was the simplicity of not having to carry cash. But in a country like Ghana, it's a very much cash society. People still use cash a lot. So um, a lot of the drivers prefer cash. So it's a good idea for you to switch to cash payments so that um, you don't have any challenges because sometimes the drivers, not sometimes, a lot of the times the drivers will cancel trips when they find out it's a card payment because a lot of these drivers don't want to do card payments they would rather have a cash payment so if you are doing a card payment just be aware that you may have drivers canceling on you frequently because they want a cash payment um, with their uber and bolt rides um, and the other thing to consider about uber and bolt in ghana is a lot of drivers 
don't want to go to certain places or they don't want to go long distances. So if they find out you're going a far distance than they want to, they will refuse you. I've had, it ex I've had that experience a number of times, countless times actually, where they decide they don't want to take you somewhere. I actually just had it happen to me last night. I got in the car, I got comfortable, then suddenly when the driver saw where I was going, he said he didn't want to go and cancel the trip while I'm sitting in the car. It's one of the big problems. I think that it's very rude and disrespectful to customers because the customer is also trying to get home or get to wherever it is they're going. And for you to accept the ride and have them sit in the car and then suddenly say you don't want to go, it just, it's just not cool. Um, it took me a good hour and a half to be able to find a vehicle to even get home because the drivers kept canceling. They didn't want to go um, to where I was going. And it happens um, a lot. So that's something to consider too, depending on where you're staying when you are in Ghana. Finally, it's a good idea. Um, if, you, if you have the money, actually, you can rent vehicles. But rental of vehicles in Ghana can be quite expensive compared to other places. So I'm using Canada and the U.S. as my reference point because that's my experience. Renting with places like, you know, Enterprise or um, Avis Rent-A-Car. Like there's so many car rental companies in Canada and the U.S. you can rent from. And a lot of them have weekend specials. So you have a weekend special. Um, I, like I've had weekend specials to rent a car where I had a car for a whole weekend for less than $150 for three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Even sometimes they have some specials that are like $50 that I've experienced in the past. But here in Ghana, you often are paying at least minimum $100 US dollars per day to rent a car. And that's to rent a car with a driver included because they see it as risky for you to drive. So if you decide you want to rent a car and you want to drive it, you don't want a driver, they actually charge more money when um, you have yourself driving the car, um, which is interesting. So keep that in mind if you're interested in renting vehicles, that it does become quite costly if you're renting vehicles in Ghana, especially in uh, greater Accra. So with all of that in mind, it's a good idea um, if you do have the money to bring your own car, buy your own car here or sh ship your own car to Ghana if you decide to move to the country. Um, a lot of people opt to ship their vehicles from abroad because there are a lot of cars in Ghana that have some challenges because of the way that the roads are. There could be a lot of problems with used vehicles. Um, also, sometimes people are not always the most um, knowledgeable about the the um, the care of the car, the previous history the, uh, the, of the owner. Um, there's also people who don't who just are not very transparent in general, and so it makes it difficult when you're purchasing a car. Um, so it's a good idea if you have the money to buy it abroad and to ship it. Um, a lot of times it's actually cheaper to do that. Uh, the only challenge is clearing the port can be quite expensive. So it depends on what you want. I'm not saying it's impossible to find a car in Ghana because you certainly can. It's just going to take a lot of effort for you to search for a car that is in good condition um, if it's a used car. Um, if you buy a brand new car, obviously there's no previous owner, um, but they are a lot more expensive here than they would be um, abroad. And so I wanted to share all of those tips with you when it comes to different transportation options in Ghana. So I hope that this has been helpful for you today. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future uploads. I really appreciate you watching. Um, there are a couple of suggested videos on the screen here right now for you. If you want to check out some of my other content, thank you for being here and I will see you next time.